Amen. If you have your Bible, uh, turn with me. Luke chapter number 11, and I'm going to begin reading in verse number 5. And I want to ask you to pray for your preacher. And uh, that's all I'm going to say. Just pray for me. I need it. Amen. Uh, Luke chapter number 11, verse 5. And it said, And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend? And go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. Uh, for a friend of mine is journeying, in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not ri rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you for everyone. Now I got this in my Bible in parentheses. And I, if you want a promise for your prayer life, I, I, I just want to challenge you to, uh, in verse number 10, either circle or put it in parentheses. And here it is. For everyone that asketh receiveth. Every, now notice that. It's unqualified promise. For everyone that asketh receiveth. Now I hope you understand what it means when it says asketh. And, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a, a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father. Will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If he then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Now for just a little while, I want to finish our study tonight. This will be the last lesson. But I want to continue our study on Lord teach us to pray. And tonight we're going to talk for just a little while on persistence in prayer. And how important it is that we, that we pray, that we continue to pray. Uh, let's uh, bow for a word of prayer and I'll get started. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day and for all that you give. And I'm asking you, God, for your help. God, you know how utterly and totally dependent I am upon you. Without you, I can't do anything. And tonight I'm asking you for your help. I'm praying for the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. You said, Lord, that you'd give the Holy Spirit to them that ask you. And I'm asking you tonight, God, to pour it out. I'm praying that you'd help me to be a blessing. God, there's some people here who've been praying and been trusting you for some things. And uh, I ask you now that you would uh, help me. And Lord, I pray that you'd it just work in a special way in Jesus' name. And amen. amen. Now tonight, uh, we started this chapter several weeks ago. And uh, in this chapter, it gives us an amazing teaching on prayer. And it was all given in response to the request of the disciples. You know, if I had started out, I'd talk about the priority of prayer. You remember Jesus was in a certain place praying. And when he finished praying, his, his disciples watched him and they said, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. Now, uh, from, from the beginning of the chapter down to verse number uh, 13, that's exactly what Jesus is doing. He's teaching uh, his disciples about the subject of prayer. Now, when we started in our study, the first thing that Jesus does, and we've studied it for several weeks, is he provides a pattern. He provided a pattern. Now, when you look at, the, at this uh, prayer, uh, it's, it's uh, the second time you find it in the Word of God. First time you find it, you find it in the uh, Sermon on the Mount. But here, it, Jesus gives it, and this is not the Sermon on the Mount, but in, response, in answer to the request, he gives the same prayer again. And he, he gives it, and he provides a pattern. There are some people that have the idea, and when I was a young man, uh, or as a, as a junior boy, 13 years old, 
our, our class would often join hands. I was in a, in a, a, church, in a church of another denomination, but our, our Bible class would often, <laughs> y'all trying to figure it out, I'm not telling you, amen. Some of you know it already, but anyhow, we used to join hands and we repeat the Lord's Prayer. Now they called it the Lord's Prayer. It's not the Lord's Prayer even because Jesus couldn't have prayed it because he, could, he never sinned. But anyhow, we'd repeat it. And, but it's not a prayer to be repeated. Jesus, Jesus didn't give it for that. He gave it as a model or a pattern to show you how you ought to pray. And, and what we tried to do in this study for the last five or six weeks is kind of dissect it and let you see what's there. Now, it, and so it begins with God's priority. And we talk about our relationship to God. And all prayer uh, is the foundation or basis of all prayer is the right relationship to God. Our Father which art in heaven. But then uh, he touches on the subject of our reverence for God. Hallowed be thy name. And we talked about what it means to hallow the name of God. And then our resignation before God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It takes, a, it takes a, a surrendered attitude to get anything from God. And then he turns to man's poverty. And he, number, the first is a request for provision. Give us day by day our daily bread. The second is a request for pardon. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted unto us. And then the third thing we studied last week was a request for protection. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And so uh, that's the pattern. And when we pray, those are the essential elements we need to include in our prayer when we pray to God. And we need to remember that when we do pray, most people when they start their prayer, they just start out, Lord, give me this, Lord, give me that. Well, that's not the way Jesus said to pray. Amen. You have to start, number one, with God's priority. You've got you you to get the right connection before you can ever pray. And so that's, that's what he's teaching. But that's not all that Jesus has to say about prayer. Now, after that, he provides a pattern for prayer. He does what I'm going to teach you on tonight. He paints a picture. Now, what he does is, uh, when he, I say he paints a picture, uh, you know, we, we've, sometimes you hear people talk about a parable. And that's what he gives. You'll find that he gives a parable of the uh, important friend, uh, some, a friend that comes at midnight. Now, when you think about a parable, if you take the word, it means to, to take something and lay it alongside. You know, if you talk about something being parallel, you mean you take something, you, you take one here and you lay another alongside of it, and these two run parallel. And when you talk about a parable, what he's doing is he's taking a story and laying aside something he's teaching to let you get a picture of something bigger. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's, he's going to put a little picture in there and he's going to paint a picture to, about, number one, a pattern of praying so that you can pray properly, all right? Number two, there's a, a, he paints a picture uh, so that you can be persistent in prayer. Now he's going to teach the importance of being persistent in prayer. You know a lot of times we, uh, you know, <laughs> I, used to, I heard a guy a long time ago, he taught, uh, he, he, he used to say when he uh, preached, he said, I don't like that song says, let us have a little talk with Jesus. Because he said, you just, it's not about us having a little talk with Jesus. It's about, it's about praying persistently. And sometimes we get that mentality where we go and we just ask one time. And we say, well, if I ask one time and God doesn't do it, then it must not be God's will. Well, when you look here, you're going to find out that he says that we ought to be persistent. We should. And, and, and let, me give you, let me give you a few things about that. I'll help you understand, number one, the, uh, if I could, the contrast. Now, he teaches, number one, by contrast, number two, by connection, and I'll show you the connection last. But when you look at the text, he says, here's a man, and uh, he has a friend who comes to him at midnight. And, it, and the friend comes at midnight, and he said, lend me three loaves. Now, the situation's like this. This guy's already laid down for the night. Now, it, Middle Eastern houses are a whole lot different than the houses that we have. You know, if you've got three kids, most of the time, all three of those, now by the way, when we grew up, it wasn't that way. But most of the time, all three of those kids got a different bedroom. But you know, in the, in the old days when you grew up, the boys had one room, the girls had another one. <laughs> and you were lucky if you had your own bed. Am I telling the truth? Amen. Amen. That's the way it was. And, but now, but in Middle Eastern culture, the way it worked was, uh, usually, 
there was a, a place inside the house that was lower. And it was there that the cooking was done. And, and at nighttime, all the animals were herded into that place. And then there was a little elevated place. And that's where the whole family slept. They laid on one little old place. I don't know, you know if it was a mat or a cot or what it was. But the whole family slept on one little elevated portion. Mom, dad, and all the kiddies right there together. So imagine, if you could, for just a moment, it's midnight now. And everybody's laid down for the night and all the animals are on the inside. And here comes a friend knocking on the door and said, you, uh, get up. I need three loaves. And he said, I got a friend that's come on a journey and I don't have anything to put before him. An embarrassing situation. And he said, no. No, don't trouble me. Trouble me not. Now, and so that's the, that's the kind of picture. Now, uh, he... I want to I want to just give you something real quick by way of contrast. When you read this text, sometimes people get the idea that he's God is trying to compare himself to a friend. That's not you're not getting it. It's not a teaching of comparison. It's a teaching of contrast. Hey, God is not a sleepy friend. Uh, he, by the way, do you know that you serve a God who never sleeps or never slumbers? Amen. And, and, and by the way, uh, he's much more than just a friend. And he's ev his ears are ever open. And he's always willing to meet your need. You can come to him any hour of the day or night, anywhere, anytime with your request. And his ears are always open, ready to hear your prayers. Amen. Now, so when you look at it, it's not, a, it's not in the beginning, it's a, it's a teaching of contrast not a teaching of comparison and so we need to be confident when we come to him that that's not the kind of God we serve and it, by the way it's not it's also not teaching that the louder I holler <laughs> or the more noise I make the more likely I am to be heard that's not what it's trying to teach either but by way, there is also not only a, a teaching of contrast, but there's also a teaching of comparison. And so I want you to see. Now, here's what Jesus is trying to teach you. And number one, first, I want you to notice, if you will, the request. Now, he said in verse six, and, and here's the here's the comparison. He said, a friend of mine is, is, is coming to me and he and he number one, he makes a request and I, he says, I have nothing to set before him. He says in the verse five, lend me three loaves. Now, that's very specific. He said, here's what I need. And by the way, when you pray to God, you need to be very specific. You need to tell him just exactly what it is you have you need, because you're going to find out in just a minute. He gave him what he needed. Amen. And, but nevertheless, there, there came a request. And he, it was midnight. It was an inopportune time. But nevertheless, he came and he knocked on the door and he said, listen, here's something I, I need. And notice, number, so that was the, the first request, the petition. But notice the second, the firm refusal. He says, notice the verse. He says in verse 7, and he from within shall answer and say, trouble me not. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. <laughs> and uh, I cannot rise and give thee. I'm not, and what he's saying is I, I, I'm not going to upset the whole household and come out and try to give you what you need. And number one, there is a, uh, there is a, there is a firm refusal. He says, trouble me not. No. Now, by the way, there's sometimes when we go to God in prayer, and here's what I want you to see. There are some times when we go to prayer and we pray to, and we ask God for something. It seems, I've heard people say it like this. It seems as though my prayers aren't making it any higher than the ceiling. Have you ever heard somebody say that? And, and sometimes nothing happens immediately. And so we think in our hearts, well, that prayer has been denied. God's not going to answer the prayer. God's not going to give me what I ask for. Well, let me, and I, I want you to write this down if you haven't already done it. Are you listening? God's delays are not his denial. Amen. Just because you don't get it immediately 
doesn't mean you're not going to get it. Amen. And that's exactly what he's trying to teach. He says, he comes to him and he says, trouble me not. And, and on the first request, he says, no. <laughs> and, and all of us who've spent any time before God in prayer have had that experience. We've gone to God maybe one time, maybe two times, and we've been persistent, uh, and, and it seems like nothing's happening. We're asking God to do something for us, and it seems as though nothing is happening, and we get discouraged sometimes, and, and oftentimes we just give up. But, are you listening? So number one, there's the first, re the first request. Number two, there's a firm refusal. But then you're going to, I, I want you to see the final result. Now notice what he says. In verse number eight, I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. Now, when he says that, when he uses that word importunity, it's because of his persistence. He, <laughs> that's because he keeps going. And he keeps asking. And he keeps seeking. And he keeps knocking. And, and he says, because of his persistence, he, you know what eventually happened? That old boy said, I've, I, I've done take, I, get up. Let's all get up. We might as well get up. He's not going to go away. <laughs> if he, we're just, I'm just going to get up and give him what he wants because if I don't, he's going to be there all night knocking on my door and crying out. So, and so he goes in, he finds the three loaves, he goes to the door and he shoves them out the door and he said, here it is. Here's as many as you need. Just take it with you and go. Now that ought to be our attitude in prayer. I mean, we ought to get to the place where when it comes to a certain thing that we need, we get the, we get the mindset, I will not be denied. Amen. And that's, that's where he wants us to be. He wants us to get, that, that, get it so ingrained in our psyche that when we get down on our knees and pray and there's something that we need and maybe it doesn't happen on the first time and maybe it doesn't happen on the second time, you say, God, I'm not giving up because I really need this and I'm just going to keep coming and I'm just going to keep knocking and I'm going to keep praying and I'm going to keep asking until you give me what I need. Amen. Now, it was several years ago I was praying for something specific. And, and I was praying morning, noon, and night. I mean, I, I, any time it came to my mind, it didn't matter where I was, I was praying. And, if I was, and it was during that time when I was on the job, I'd stop. And I, didn't, I wouldn't take my lunch time. I'd go somewhere and get along with God. And I'd, get, I'd just pray. And I was asking him the same thing over and over again. And when I did, I was quoting this first. Now, let me give you, so you find... Number two, the first thing you find, you find a pattern uh, of, uh, for proper praying. And then you find him painting a picture for persistent praying. And you find, as you look in the text, you find the first request, give me three loaves. You find the firm refusal, trouble me not. And then you find the final result because of his importunity, he rises and gives him as many as he needs. Now, now the second thing, or the third thing that you see in the text, the second thing I'm going to talk to you about tonight, is you find he presents a promise. Now, when you look at that, I, verses 9 and 10, you, you need never to forget verses 9 and 10. And, and the first promise has to do with persistent praying. Those who persist. Now, when he says that, he said, I say unto you, now, I, here's, what, here's the way I got it marked in my Bible, ask and it shall be given unto you. Now, and I underline, it shall be given to you. Seek and, and then I underline those words, ye shall find. And then it says, knock and it shall be opened. And I, I, I I underline those words, it shall be open unto you. And then in the next verse, verse number 10, for everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Now, it doesn't say, if you read that t the context of that, it's not saying if you ask one time, if you knock one time, if you seek one time. Here's what it says. 
for everyone that asketh. Now the word, when you, it says ask and then it says ask, that's, that's present tense. And what that means is, if you, if in the original, is continuing action. And what it means, for everyone that continues to ask. It's saying, if you don't give up, if you don't give up, you're going to receive it. And, and he says, if you don't quit knocking, it's going to be open to you. And if you don't quit seeking, you're going to find what you're looking for. And, and he's saying, if you'll just keep on doing it, if you'll just keep on praying, if you'll just keep on holding on to God and calling out to him, you're going to get your prayer answered. Amen. And that's exactly what the context, and, and that, you know what that means to you and me? That means that we shouldn't give up. And there's some people in this room right now, you're praying for something. You're praying for someone. You're praying for your children who are, who have drifted out into sin and are far away from God. And, and you prayed and you prayed and you prayed and it seems like nothing's happening. I'm, what should I do, preacher? I'll tell you what you ought to do. You ought to keep on asking and you ought to keep on knocking and you ought to keep on seeking for everyone that asketh receive it and to him that knocketh it shall be and to him, hey, are you getting it? And him that seeketh find it. Hey, 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 by the way, I heard someone say the other night we were in the prayer meeting and there are people who are burdened about their children. They're burdened about, and, and they're praying. They're praying persistently for their children. Every week they're coming together and calling their children's name before God in prayer. And the whole thing was started because a bunch of parents got burdened about their kids. And, and one woman said this. She said, it's hard sometimes to wait your turn. And she's seen what God's been, God started to do in the lives of some others. Amen. <laughs> Pam was sitting in the choir on Sunday and she looked back over the congregation and she, she looked in there and said, my son. By the way, are you listening to me? He's been in church the last two Sundays. Amen. Now he didn't come here last Sunday, but he, came, he, he went with his girlfriend to the, her mother's church. He saw her get baptized. And I could tell you a lot more about that, but I, I don't, there's some things I don't want to let you know. But, because it's, it's kind of personal, but God's working in his heart. Amen. And looked in the back and there sat the two Larry boys. Do you, by the way, do you remember how we prayed for those guys? Amen. And there sat Robbie's sons right beside of Lisa in church. Amen. Hey, and, I'm, and I'm telling you, they're all here. You know why they're here? They're here because somebody's been praying for them. Amen. And now you say, you might say, well, I've been praying for mine and I haven't seen the answer yet. What should I do, preacher? Can we tell you what? Keep on praying. Amen. Keep on knocking. Keep on seeking. Keep on asking. Hey, don't give up. And by the way, I am convinced that if you do that, God's going to answer your prayer. You may not see it even in your lifetime, but you need to keep on praying it. Amen. Praise God. Can I tell you? I want to tell you a story about a good friend of mine. I had a good friend. You know him. And he always wanted to be a deacon. And, and for some reason, he got overlooked every time. And finally, right before I left Dixie, I brought the guy's name up and we ordained him to be a deacon. And uh, he became a deacon. And he, I remember the night that he went forward and he said, he knelt at the altar and he prayed and he said, God, whatever it takes, to get my boys back in church. I want it. Amen. Now, he probably didn't know the gravity of what he was about, what he was saying. But it was just a few months after he became a deacon that he got acute leukocytic leukemia. Did I say that right, honey? I'm not a, I'm not a medical person. But he got leukemia, bad leukemia. I remember going down and visiting him in the hospital. I was already the pastor here, and I went to see him in the hospital. And I said, how you doing? He said, I'm doing fine. <laughs> and he said, I told God, whatever it takes to get my boys back in church. That's right. By the way, he didn't get to see it. But every one of those boys, three of them, are back in church. And you know why they're back in church? 
Hey, one of them, was, one of them was coaching a basketball team. The other one was going to a local church not far from here, and and, and one, like, they're they're all back in church and serving God. And I'm convinced that's because of Daddy got so burdened about his boys that he said, God, whatever it takes to get my boys back in church. And he prayed. He never got to see it, but it came to fruition. Hey, listen, don't give up. Hey, hey, just because you haven't seen it yet, you may not see it in your lifetime. But I'm telling you that there's a God who always keeps his promise. And he said, everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And he that knocketh, it shall be opened unto him. And you need to keep on asking. You need to keep on seeking. And you need to keep on knocking because there's a God in heaven. Heaven, who always answers his prayer and keeps his promise amen and so the first promise had to do with persistence but the second promise you find in the context of the scripture has to do with paternity now I hope you'll be able to identify this because every time I read this it breaks my heart it says if a son shall ask bread of, of any of you that is a father will you give him a stone or if he asks a fish for a fish, will you give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will you give him a scorpion? Now, what he's saying in the context, if we put it in the West Virginia vernacular, you'd say, well, if, if, if he asks you for bread, are you going to give him a rock? If, you ask him, if he asks you for a fish, are you going to give him a snake? Or what if he asks you for an egg, are you going to give him a, a scorpion? You know what the answer to all that is? No. That's right. Amen. Hey, I can tell you, I'm a father. And I can tell you, if my son comes to me and asks me for something that he needs, and it's in my power to give it to him, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give it to him. God. And that's just part of being a dad. If he needs it. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of things they don't need. Amen. And they'll ask for him too, by the way. Amen. But if he needs it, I'm going to move heaven and earth if I can to give him what it, you know what I'm talking about. Hey, you mothers are in on this. I mean, I know it says the father, but if you can, if it's in your power to give it to him. And by the way, and you know what he says? He said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, much more your, your heavenly father. Hey, he, and by the way, it says the Holy Spirit and he moves from the greater to the lesser and he, and, and he thinks about the greatest thing that he could give you was, was the Spirit of God. But he knows how to give good gifts to his children. And I listen, you should have confidence in prayer knowing that you serve a God who loves you so much that if there's something that you need, if it's in his power to give it to you, he'll give it to you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, a lot of times in our lives, we, get, we got to the place where we... We have, uh, we've all been in a situation where we prayed for something. And, and sometimes we haven't received it. But <laughs> we realize in the course of time, you, have you ever, I'm going to show you how carnal I am, amen. Yes, have you ever heard the old Garth Brooks song, Thank God for Unanswered Prayers, amen? Well, if, you lived, if you've lived in, any time... You'll, you'll know that there have been times in your life when you ask God for something that if he'd have gave it to you, it could have been a disaster, amen? Right, amen. And God withheld that. <laughs> and because he did, he was just saying, he was just trying to show you his love. He was just trying to show you that he cares about you. And, and he could look out there in the future and say, if I, if I give you this, it's going to hurt you. And are you understanding what I'm saying? Amen. If there's something that's going to aid you if there's something that's going to be it's going to help you if there's something that you need he's not going to withhold it from you the only things that he withholds is things that would hurt you if you got them amen <laughs> i can tell you along the way there's some things that i prayed about if god would have gave them to me i'd have been shipwrecked right now amen and he knew what he was doing and by the way he knows what he's doing in your life he knows what he's doing for you but i don't know where you are i don't know what it is you're praying about but I can tell you this, number one, when he talked about, when the, when the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, first thing he did was, number one, he gave a pattern for prayer. And then he painted a picture. Now, what he painted the picture was, he wants you to be persistent. He said, you keep on praying because that guy's not going to get up and give that, give that bread to that fellow because he's his friend. But if he keeps... <laughs> 
If he keeps on asking, he's going to rise up and give him all that he needs. And that's what God's going to do for you. But just because he hadn't done it at the first request or the second request, I'll tell you what you ought to do. You ought to keep on asking. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And you ought to keep on seeking for he that seeketh, continues to seek, findeth. And you ought to keep on knocking for cause he that knocketh, it sh by the way, keeps on knocking, it shall be opened unto him. And so, tonight, if I had a message to give you, the message is this. Keep on praying. Don't quit.